All right, so where are these things ending up as Uranus and Neptune have kind of moved? Okay, so here's another plot. We're looking at the eccentricity yep. versus the semi-major axis. And we have the resonances as we were just talking about on the top. So you see the three to two resonance is very crowded and some of the other resonances are quite crowded. Yep. And the basic idea is most of these things started off down here with low eccentricity and low semi-major axis. Um, and what happens is if you get perturbed by something close in. So what I'm going to do now is I've got the sun, Neptune and a random trans-Neptunian yep. object. I'm going to get them orbiting. Only now, in previous simulations, they were just following their orbits. Now I've given Neptune a bit of mass, which means it's going to pull on Pluto, so Pluto doesn't, or whatever it is, doesn't end up where it was saying right. before. But now it's come in a little bit closer So here. now, for example, Neptune's pulling it backwards, so you see it's lost energy and it's coming closer in. Yep. Now it's pulling it forwards, and so now it's going to go further out. So it's going to, but it's kind of then completed its, its yeah. point. So now it's going to do this again? Yeah, so basically depending whether, where they are on their close encounter, it's now pulling it forwards. So now it's going to fly outwards a bit more. Yep. So basically every time it comes in, if it's not in a resonant orbit, it's going to get pulled yep. in some direction by Neptune, Neptune and to a lesser extent by Uranus. And these doesn't tend to change the perihelion. So look at the distance of this closest encounter. It's essentially that's, the same. It's not changing yeah. very much. Yeah. What's changed quite a lot is the, the aphelion. aphelion. Yep. So that's thought to what happened here. That, and think the eccentricity gets bigger and the aphelion gets bigger. So the semi-major axis goes up. So yep. these things start moving up here. Ah, OK. And so this is called the scattered disk. So essentially they almost migrate along this region yeah. this line. And they can migrate in various directions. Uh, sometimes they migrate inwards, okay. in which case they get more and more perturbed. Mm -hmm. And some of them end up um, actually having a close encounter. If they get moved inwards, eventually they might end up having a close encounter with Uranus or Neptune. So what happens then? Well, then they get flung into quite different orbit. They, these are what we call the centaurs. These are the ones uh, that orbit between Saturn's orbit and Uranus and so, Neptune. So we actually think these were formed in a similar mechanism, but instead of kind of getting pushed out, they got shoved in. That's right. And this is actually the biggest trans Neptunian object of them all, is actually Triton, the moon of Neptune. Wait, so it's a. But it's around Neptune. How is it a trans Neptunian object? Well, it isn't now, but almost certainly it started off oh. as one of these trans Neptunian orbits, and it was perturbed in these sort of ways, and it came in close enough, it was actually captured into orbit around Neptune. So it had one of these close encounters and then just was at the right spot, so the gravity of Neptune. Captured it. It must have been a rather complicated <laughs> yeah, yeah, manoeuvre yeah. involved in it. But it's, it's orbiting in a highly eccentric orbit backwards around Neptune, which is why... Oh, OK. And this is what you're talking about, right? If we get 180 degrees in terms of the incline, you're essentially going backwards yeah. around the solar system. Yeah, this is not going back, back around the solar system. It's going Go back, back around, around Neptune. Neptune. Yep. So Neptune's spinning one way and it's going backwards in an inclined orbit, which is most easily explained by this. So if actually people ask what's the biggest of these ice worlds, trans Neptunian objects, I say it's not Pluto, it's Triton, because Triton is both bigger and more massive than Pluto. Interesting. So it's a moon. <laughs> so had it not been captured by Neptune, it would be the biggest object out there. Yes. Neptune, um, it's, uh, uh, but it, was, it had been scattered inwards, so if it hadn't been captured by Neptune, it would probably have been swallowed by one of the planets. Oh, okay. So it would now be another 0.01% of the mass of the core <laughs> of Uranus and Neptune. And uh, pr probably there were a lot more massive ones to begin with, and the trans Neptune object probably would have had the mass that we were expecting from, and most of that mass has been swallowed up. By the, by uh, but the, this is the biggest lump left over, Yep. Um, and it's now a rather weird moon of Neptune. Is it in residence with Neptune as well now? Well, it's orbiting Neptune. So yeah, yeah, but it does yeah, no. yeah. okay. And it's by far the most massive Neptune's moon. It doesn't have to resonate with anything else. Yep. So um, that's the scattered disk, and it's probably where Triton comes from.